uh, good evening. Uh, as the title suggests, uh, this video is going to be about uh, <clears throat> collecting complete box games uh, compared to collecting cartridges. And uh, my, my perspective, really, uh, of what that entails, uh, what it means, uh, I, I guess that to most collectors of uh, games, on the whole, not necessarily people that only collect cl complete in box games. Uh, I, I understand how difficult it is to, to collect completed box games. Uh, obviously, being in Japan, uh, I, I always tried to in the UK, but since moving to Japan, it's become a lot easier to collect uh, complete in box games. So uh, I, I really am in like uh, my element being here and being able to collect uh, Japanese games complete in box mostly. So that really. Uh, does appeal to me. Uh, so, obviously, to get onto the first point of of why somebody or myself, why why would I collect uh, complete in box games compared to cartridges? Uh, I think I think it's pretty obvious for most people. I mean, obviously, it's the, the box art is uh, very nice on uh, the the games that you know uh, a lot of the games such as. Uh, the systems that I, I collect for mainly are Super Famicom, GameCube. Uh, I don't yet collect for the N64. I, I don't. I'm not particularly sure that the N64 uh, Japanese N64 game artwork was was superior to uh, other regions. Uh, <clears throat> but I think that generally the Super Famicom and the GameCube were, in my in my humble opinion, of course. Uh, so that's the reason why I collect for those two systems uh, mainly because I just think that the box art is totally uh, much better than than uh, PAL uh, and uh, NTSC. Uh, not not in all cases, but in most cases. Uh, and there's more games anyway for uh, some of those systems. Uh, only S Super Famicom. Uh, so anyway, to give you some examples of games that will not cost the earth but have like really wonderful box art i just wanted to give you a few examples so for example we've got uh gaia something or other i don't know what it is in japanese but it's just got really stunning artwork and it's not an expensive game to pick up really uh to be honest it's not too pricey so for me that's like a game that You can just appreciate its artwork, and then you compare that to the cartridge. And to be honest, I, I didn't go as far as comparing the cartridge prices to the the box, complete in box games, but that's the cartridge. Obviously, I, I totally understand and respect anybody that wants to collect cartridges and especially just have them to play the games. That that's probably the most understandable thing in the world. I that. You'd be stupid not to be able to understand that. Uh, but I guess if if you can if you if you want to have this is my this is my opinion. I'd rather have less games in boxes than have more games and have cartridges because I think that the boxes and the manuals uh, for me appeal to me just as much as uh, the games do. I think it's probably 50-50, if not probably 60-40 uh, in favour of the, the, the boxes themselves, which might sort of uh, make people think that I'm a little bit weird or uh, or probably a lot of people don't agree with. Maybe it's all about the games. But then if it was all about the games, I'd be like really hardcore into uh, emulation maybe. I don't know. It's not all about games for me. Definitely not. It's It's, it's definitely... 50-50, 100%, if not slightly skewed more towards uh, the box art and uh, and such. Uh, so, going on to the second example, the second example is uh, Tales of Fantasia. Again, a very inexpensive game, but it's got some really, really top quality artwork on it. And uh, th these are just really, uh, you know, I haven't really... Put much thought into these examples. I just picked them off because I know that the artwork's fantastic, and uh, I think that if anyone disagrees, they're, they're probably just 
being difficult because it's it's just plain to see that the artwork's fantastic uh, and not expensive games. They're not going to break the bank, uh, and especially you compare cartridge to box, complete box. Of course, there's going to be a difference in, from some people's perspective. It might be a big difference, but if you didn't buy an extra two cartridges of other two games, maybe you could afford the boxed game, and I'd rather have that than to have those three games because there's. These games are still going to have 40 hours of gameplay in them anyway. Uh, besides the point, anyway, it's not it's not about the length of the game. It's, it is about the artwork. The third example uh, is Breath of Fire, which is a very, very, very inexpensive game to, to obtain. Uh, but the artwork is some of the best uh, for the Super Famicom. It's absolutely fantastic. Uh, you know, the whole uh, character show on, on show on the front of the box... <coughs> And not just that, it's very colourful, very well designed and very, very attractive. So for me, it is fantastic. Uh, so that, that's part and parcel of the, the whole appeal of collecting uh, complete box games, uh, you could say. Uh, I'm trying to keep this video as uh, short as possible, but it's probably not going to work. I've wrote down some point, written down some points again. I don't appreciate <clears throat> all systems box art, uh, so I I wouldn't exactly like be foaming at the mouth for PS2 games box art, for example. I wouldn't be too concerned about f Xbox 360, anything in like sort of a plastic uh, box uh, that's current gen or just recently uh, current gen, last gen maybe doesn't really appeal to me so much since the cardboard sleeves have been discontinued uh, yeah those sort of games don't really have mass appeal for me uh, again Sega Saturn PS1 oh, fly bastard uh, Sega Saturn PS1 Dreamcast same thing again uh, I kind of much appreciate uh, the boxes in America uh, and PAL definitely, the PAL games for PS1 are, are, are the best in my opinion same with the Dreamcast as well uh, Saturn Saturn, <laughs> Saturn's quite funny actually because uh, obviously Saturn, it, the boxes in the UK and Europe are pretty pretty horrendously designed uh, but in America I think they're in they're in hard plastic boxes I believe, uh, so they're probably better well designed, here they're just, they're just uh, CD cases which really does take the shine off so uh, anyway, moving swiftly on, uh, collecting complete and box games. It's not like uh, being elitist at all. It's just something that I think people a lot of a lot of people gravitate towards naturally. It's mm -hmm. it's like they really just uh, box bo complete and box games look better on display. Uh, so if you're not playing games that or you can't always play all your games at the same time of course so but you can still appreciate the games but if it's just a cartridge and you could just got it on its side there's nothing to appreciate and yet that's why I don't do it because I'd, I'd rather have the boxes on display uh, actually ironically my wife's cleaned up half my games uh, which I still owe her a backhander for but uh this is this is my thing. Like I'd rather have them to look at and to see uh, when when I'm not playing them, I can still enjoy them. That that's really crucial for me. Uh, so that's that. Next thing, uh, the pros of collecting uh, uh, completing box games. So nicer box art. So obviously the box art uh, is a main draw. Uh, it's really nice to look at. It's attractive on display. Uh, some of the the images are timeless. Uh, there's been you know some artwork put put into it. Uh, there, there's a lot to appreciate there. You know uh, by looking at the you can you can go back and you can try and research who was the the artist for the game and stuff like that. You know looking through the manual, looking through looking at all sides of the boxes. You know who who actually drew who who actually drew these pictures? You know, uh, and it's the same characters in game, so it's kind of like a reflection of the game as well. It's not just a random a random game, a, a random illustration. It's a, it's a it's designed for its purpose. You know, uh, 
they look nicer on display. Discuss that. Uh, manual included. Manual included. Uh, this is my thoughts on this. Uh, when you don't have a manual, where do you look? Like, if you want to know the moves list for a game, if you, I mean, if you don't know the move list for like Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat by now, then you're you're pretty. Uh, you've been living under a rock for a while. But the fact remains that if you don't know the moves or you don't know like certain things. Uh, not just for Super Famicom, but for Super Nintendo or something. Having the manual is like the most direct way to just pick it up, open it up, look at the pictures, see the directions. Because looking on the internet, you could end up on multiple sources. Everyone giving you different opinions of what you should do and stuff like that. But with the manual, it's very direct, connected exactly directly to the game. Uh, so I think the manual is important. Uh, to be honest, I hardly use them. Uh, I hardly look at the manuals because mostly because I'm worried about damaging the manuals, uh, which is pretty uh, uh, dainty. But uh, mm, I, I just don't want to go mad just like pulling them apart and stuff like. That. I do look through the manuals when I get, especially when I get them in the post and I I receive the games. I go through and I look at the I look through the manuals. I look at the all of the box art uh, and then. Obviously, they go on the shelf, but uh, hopefully, I'll get more on display in the future myself. So I don't want to sound like I'm uh, sort of being a hypocrite myself. You know, I, I uh, I'll get there eventually once I've got more space, uh, but potentially increase in value more. So of course, uh, the games will potentially increase in value more, especially the older games. Uh, I, I I've got no examples here. Really, but the the rarer games in their boxes, you're talking about. I don't know. There's loads of examples. I mean, if you had Rendering Ranger, for example, how many boxed copies of that are there? You know, I don't know. And what if one went on fire? Uh, some other dude dropped his in a bath. Another dude took his out to a bar and uh, gave it to someone to set fire to. I don't know. Any anything can happen to any single copy of a game, especially if it's cardboard uh, so they're bound to, to decrease as time continues so they're bound to increase in value and rarity and scarcity if you like uh, as time goes by uh, so they will increase in value absolutely 100% you can guarantee that unless there's a world war uh, which I have often uh, contemplated and worried about as well but uh, that's probably just my uh, mind okay <clears throat> the cons the cons. So basically, uh, what are the cons to collecting completing box games? They're very hard to store. They take up a lot of space. Uh, yeah, they do. They take up like twice as much space as cartridges could. You could just stack cartridges, but you need to really like be respectful towards your box games. I mean, uh, I try to be as as respectful as I can. I mean, you could just see. An example, I stack my GameCube games here, uh, but I leave a gap in between because pulling them out is a nightmare. I, I mean, I really wish I have a, have a better system. I, I bought a few tonight and some dude, they're just on the shelf below. Uh, the dude that sent them wrapped them all in cling film. So I'm considering just wrapping all of those in cling film, to be honest, to, to look after the boxes. But yeah, they're hard to store. They take up a lot of space. Uh, I mean, imagine if you just had discs, uh, you'd, you'd fit all of the... GameCube games and PS2 games have got there on half a shelf if you just had discs, but then I don't. I, that doesn't appeal to me at all. At all. Uh, so anyway, a lot of responsibility uh, with something, especially. Uh, I can't read what I wrote, but a lot of responsibility. They are a lot of responsibility. Uh, you're talking about games that you've. You pro you might have paid a fair hefty you know three figures for, and if you have, and it's made of cardboard or something like that, you're like you know if you don't buy box protectors, I haven't yet. But if you don't buy box protectors or you're not storing them properly, uh, you got children and they're within arm's reach. You know they are a hell of a lot of responsibility, and you really need to like be on alert all the time, which is a real pain in the ass. I mean I I mean mine are out of reach now. Most of my my games that are are grabbable by my little boy so uh but i tell you what it, it, it does you do worry like you think someone can just grab a game and then psh, throw it on the floor oh there's 
30 quid gone, there's 50 quid gone, you know, and yeah, that's not a, a good feeling really, you know, because yeah, like that, that can, that can happen. Uh, another con, uh, this is just very obvious, but they're more expensive and sometimes very expensive. Uh, you're talking about, th this is like perfect example for Super Famicom anyway, but rendering Ranger, uh, sort of retail cartridge is about $300, uh, which is like fucking massively expensive for a cartridge. It's like 200 quid. Uh, but then you look at a boxed copy and it's like $1,500. So that's like a five times, uh, five times, 500%, is it five? I don't know if it's five, but five times the, the value of what it is as a cartridge to boxed and complete. And that sort of markup is staggering uh, just because it has a box and a manual. So yeah, they are more expensive, but I I, I believe personally that the, the box games will increase in value much, much, at a much faster rate than the cartridges will. So, uh, it's not not like you're buying games to cash in. But if you're going to buy something, you know, you don't want it to lose money. It, if you want it to lose money, then you're kind of mental, you know. Uh, and I don't understand people that say, "Oh, yeah, but it's just for the love of the games." I totally understand that. But if you're a collector and you're buying hundreds of games. If you're thinking, well, I'm going to lose money on all of these, then you're just mental. You're, you're weird, uh, in my opinion. I think people just, uh, if they, they talk about the love of the games and they talk about all of this and that, oh, I only buy it for the games and da 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 da, I don't believe that at all. Because if you're a collector and you've got hundreds of games on your shelves, right, and you think that every single game that you bought is going to depreciate in value, then you're obviously lying or you're just, you're trying to, behave like you're like this like oh it's just the love for the games and everything like that and I, I don't buy that at all it's it's got I, I don't buy that at all if if people are buying games hundreds of games and they think they're gonna then they're they're mugs are in my opinion you know because it's just like massive amounts of money that you're spending that's just gonna go down the drain unless you're buying like current gen and you're just like some mashed potato brain person and just buying hundreds of uh, current gen games because you just love them. I can understand that. But if you're buying loads of old retro games, uh, then you're a bit mental. If you, you don't think, if you're buying them and you don't want them to grow in value, or you don't think that they will be investments. Uh, okay, last point uh, deterioration. Uh, they will deteriorate. This, this is a massive con, especially for Super Famicom, Super Nintendo games. Uh, it goes back to hard to store, taking up space, a lot of responsibility. If you don't look after them properly, uh, then they will deteriorate. And you could potentially, and this goes back to being very expensive and losing money and depreciating. If you don't store them properly, uh, then they can depreciate and deteriorate. And then you're going to end up losing money uh, because you didn't take the time to respect what you bought and what you spent your money on. Uh, so I think that that there uh, you kind of yeah you can you can lose out in collecting uh, because you're not just losing out on on potential resale value if you're considering that when you're buying but you're losing out on having a game that looked really nice when you bought it and then suddenly you you look at it and oh fuck I didn't look at that I didn't keep an eye on it and now it's got woodworm or <laughs> not, the, not the games can get woodworm but it's got like damp or something or or something's happened mold uh, because you stored it in a in a a, a, a moist a moist place or a humid place uh, so yeah that's about it to be honest uh, that's just my thoughts and that was a lot of waffle in a, in a very short time well 20 minutes so I, I won't keep you any longer but I really would appreciate people's thoughts because I really tried to put across as much as I could uh, about that and this is just completely completely my opinion my mind my perspective on on completing box games uh, uh, and I completely appreciate anybody that doesn't uh, collect again I'll reiterate this I completely respect anybody that doesn't collect completing box games it's it's completely their prerogative I understand that uh, but I just I, I personally couldn't do it and again that's not an elitist attitude that's just something that I prefer to do. I'd rather have less games and more in box than have uh, lots of games on, on discs or just random discs in a folder or 
cartridges, for example. So uh, I'm going to wrap it up now, but uh, if you're still here, thanks for listening and take care. See you again soon.